We've come to accept the fact that we are a broke country, that we are not in a very healthy economic situation. And no one has, decided, has tried to cover that up, because that's where we are. <coughs> and, and why are we in the situation we are in? Because for three, four years, we decided to go into a very serious political mode, talk so much about consumption, stopped thinking about how to produce. And, and so I want to agree with the fact that Kenyans are suffering. Mm -hmm. But I think the <clears throat> diagnosis that is being placed forward by, you know, Azimio, especially blaming the government for where we are today, for me, I think it's not right because we were in this situation even before the elections. What we kept doing was to apply steroids, you know, oil subsidy. Who, was, who, who is paying for the subsidy? Kenyans. Through what? And, and I'm happy all of us who are here were in parliament, last parliament. We were part of the uh, team. Apart from him. Apart from, uh, apart from Mandato, yes. We were part of the team that, you know, raised the debt ceiling every now and then mm -hmm. to accommodate this uh, very wanton consumption. And, and if you remember, Sam, the UNGA subsidy. Mm -hmm. how, how do you subsidize urban populations in a manner that you can't even measure? Because this UNGA was basically a supermarket UNGA. None of it got to the rural areas where people are so hungry. And, and, and therefore, it didn't reach anybody. And, and I challenge you to tell me anybody you know, Sam, who received the UNGA at the price that were being told they were being subsidized at. Number two, the way you were running the, the oil subsidy was so corrupt, so convoluted, so steeped in secrecy that it was not benefiting so many people. Because if you looked at the amounts that were being paid and how much you were paying at, at, at the pump, the difference is so huge. And if one day someone were to you know, try to investigate the amount of money that we paid in oil subsidies and how much Kenyans received, you would understand why the president put a flaw on it. So, so uh, are you saying the subsidy was not um, commensurate with the number of liters that are sold? Yes, yes. There was so much corruption in it. I, I can tell you without pure contradiction that the kind of, the, the kind of monies we're losing at, along the chain of who is receiving one shilling per liter for this, who is receiving 50 cents per liter, who is receiving two shillings per liter, along that chain. I mean, I know what was happening. But the pump and, and, prices? And so I think I give you Talk a, about pump I prices I also. Time. I think I give you mm -hmm. a time. Let him to finish. B because you know, if you're saying the cost of subsidy is 10 shillings, then the Kenyans should receive the 10 shillings at the pump. But if you looked, if, and I, I mean, we're going to be here probably next time, and we challenge you to go and check how much subsidies you are giving and the pump prices. The difference was so huge. Talk to all marketers, they'll tell you. So, so the, the reason subsidies had to go was that it was steeped in corruption. Number two, it was raising our debt so highly and exponentially, it was not sustainable. So what do we do now? Yeah, that's, that's where I'm coming to. That's where I'm coming to because I, I believe that since this president came to power, and what is important uh, normally, Sam, is to first of all accept the problem and try to get away of solving it. Mm -hmm. The president found an economy that was bleeding. So first thing to do is to stop the bleeding and then start, put, start putting positions and action that are going to make sure that you're able to grow. And I'm personally convinced that with the kind of economic decisions that have been made, the policy decisions that have been made over time. And, and I want to just make it clear that since 2022 20, August, there's been no single increase in tax on any item. We've not had any in parliament coming to parliament for us to increase tax. And so any allegation that someone tells you that tax has increased on any item is not true. Taxes being being applied today were the ones that were being applied before elections. Mm -hmm. uh, and so personally, I agree with the fact that we need, this is the time to plant. And plant in all senses of the word. Plant in our farms, plant in our factories, plant everywhere. And be patient with the planting, mm. weed what you have, and expect to harvest. But we, yeah. can, we cannot expect, for example, a president to come in within a day, and then two days later, he's making populist policy decisions that are going to, make, to uh, create more debt, steep us further into poverty. I believe, and, and this is historical, historical Sam, mm -hmm. if you look at America in 1992, 93, when Bill Clinton came into power, mm -hmm. you look at uh, America in 2008, 9, when America was going down, and that time Clinton came in, then Obama came in, I saw kind of policies that are being played in Kenya today, being played in those countries. And it took time before people felt them. And so I believe that the decisions being, that are being made today okay. are good. 
but they will take time before people get, get to feel them. And I just want to uh, 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 ask my colleagues here that weaponizing this runaway cost of living, trying to blame it on the government, I, don't, I, I think it's irresponsible. I believe that you can come to a table and discuss what are we not doing right that should be done right to make this work. But right. don't blame the echoes of leaving the auctioning that are happening today mm. on a regime that is hardly six months to power. Okay, it's actually five months.